So just watch the news, become a part of it. Now, you are not holding back on the city's latest traffic deaths. A terrible story. Two teen boys trapped inside of a burning car. They do not survive. Two of their friends got out, though. Gloria knew them well and tells us tonight, I am so heartbroken and distraught over the loss of these young men. And Irma saying, the sad thing is, it happened on Mother's Day. Very heartbreaking. Also tonight, like many of us, having a hard time comprehending a shooting at a retirement home. We have brand new details out of Las Cruces tonight on an 89-year-old who reportedly shot his son, according to police. That son did not survive. Jerry is telling us least place to expect that to happen. What's going on with humanity? And also tonight, Tom Brady has gone from being the star of the Super Bowl to being in the spotlight of NFL sanctions. Nicole, we're talking about that. And have you seen this one? McDonald's new Hamburglar. Um, okay. Christina telling us he looks like he's getting ready to go to a bad Halloween costume party from the 70s. We gotta love Paul. PR failure. Hire me, Nicole. We are under storm track weather first alert for the possibility of thunderstorms tomorrow. I'll let you know around what time you can expect those storms coming up in storm track weather. It is all next on ABC 7 and 9. Get ready. You become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Hello everybody, this is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW, the only newscast in the borderland giving you a voice in every story. Thanks for joining us, I'm Bob Hart. And I'm Nicole Gomez, tracking what you're saying, and I'm also tracking showers and thunderstorms for tomorrow's forecast. So we issued that first alert because of what we are expecting tomorrow. By tomorrow afternoon, our model showing us that we could see showers and possible thunderstorms for some areas. Not only that, lightning will also be a possibility. Hail, potentially, for some areas across town. And it looks like the storms will continue into Wednesday. But uh, we'll talk more about what we can expect and take a look at the models and talk about those rain chances and thunderstorms for tomorrow, Bob. All right, thanks so much for that, Nicole. We do appreciate that. In the news tonight, a 17-year-old is at the Lubbock Burn Center and an 18-year-old is being treated at a hospital here in El Paso. They were lucky enough to get out of a burning car that crashed in the Lower Valley last night. Two other teens, though, they were not as fortunate. One of them, 17-year-old Jacob Salazar, a student at East Lake High School. His family set up a GoFundMe account to pay for his funeral. We have that information for you right now at KVIA.com if you'd like to help out. Well, the last moments of these teens' lives are hard to fathom. Police are saying the BMW was southbound on the 600 block of Zaragoza when it hit a curb, went through a guardrail, and then flew over that canal. It landed and burst into flames. ABC 7 live tonight with what police now say happened. We go to reporter Pilar Arias for the latest. She's live in our newsroom. Pilar. Good evening, Bob. I spoke with the mother of one of the two boys stuck in the back seat, Jacob Salazar. She said it was likely that her son just met the driver of the car last night. As you just heard, the driver survived with non life threatening injuries. The third passenger was taken to a Lubbock burn center and is being treated. I spoke with a witness at the scene who described what happened last night. He said he saw the 2003 BMW come at a high rate of speed when it first jumped a curb, hit a guardrail, flew over a canal ditch, hit a second guardrail, and was on fire before it hit the ground. Obviously, family is too distraught to talk with us on camera at this time, but I did speak with one senior at America's High School. He told me classmates were talking about the crash today since they heard one of the teens killed was a senior there. It's really devastating. It's really sad to have these people. It's really sad, honestly, just knowing that they come here to the school. Um, unfortunately, I guess it's good that one person did survive. There's one that possibly could be good and come out safe, but um, just for the two that did pass away, that's really terrible. And a man at the scene did tell us that it was his brother, 18-year-old Eric Dominguez, who was the America student who died in the crash. Bob, back to you. All right, then, Pilar, thanks so much for that. And again, we do want to remind you, there is a GoFundMe account set up for Salazar's funeral expenses. You'll find that right now at KVIA.com. And, of course, so many people are talking about that. And thank you, Pilar, for sharing the latest with us. Let's go ahead and get to some of the comments that you're sharing on our Facebook page tonight. Estella begins the discussion. How incredibly heartbreaking. Ray. Nice present you gave your moms on Mother's Day. The driver should be charged with murder. 
Gloria saying, I had the privilege of knowing the two students who are now gone and the driver of the car. All the parents involved and their children lose. They are gone too soon. Paula telling us tonight, those families are in my prayers. Two young lives lost. I certainly don't take for granted how blessed I am that my children have remained safe. And a different Gloria tonight telling us, no matter how these boys lost their lives, they're still someone's babies. Brothers, cousins, friends, etc. Rest in peace, boys. If you have something to say, you can join us on Facebook right now to share your thoughts. Another big story happening tonight, a shooting at a Las Cruces retirement home. It is now a deadly shooting. And we also know from police that an officer shot the 89-year-old suspected gunman. Uh, the disbelief is widespread on Facebook tonight. Nelly saying, oh my God, Terry, how awful, and Jovita, how sad. For a while, this was a hostage situation at an assisted living center in Las Cruces called the Village at North Rise. That's just off Roadrunner Parkway. Now, since our live developing coverage on ABC 7 at 6 earlier today, we have confirmed the 89-year-old suspect is at UMC tonight here in El Paso with a gunshot wound to his hand. Police are now saying that he shot his 65-year-old son in the chest. Again, he did not survive. And a woman who was caught in the middle of all of this should be okay. ABC 7's Josie Ortegón reports new at 9 from the New Mexico Mobile Newsroom. The hostage situation turned into a deadly shooting. Police say an 89-year-old resident here at the village at North Rise shot and killed his son who was visiting him this morning. Police say the two got into a fight inside the resident's room. That's when a staff member checked in on the two and police say she was then held hostage by the father. When police arrived, the man allegedly assaulted officers and that's when officers fired and shot him. The man's 65-year-old son was found inside the room with a gunshot wound. He was taken to Mountain View Regional Hospital in Las Cruces where he died. One resident tells us what he witnessed today. I heard what appeared to be three gunshots. And I had a friend over, and we looked out, I have a balcony out there, and there were ambulance and fire truck and a, uh, cops all over the place within minutes of, that, of the gunshot. So they were here evidently before anybody got shot. The father was taken to UMC with minor injuries. Charges against him are pending. The employee held hostage was not injured, and the officer who fired his weapon will be placed on administrative leave. In Las Cruces with our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom, Josie Ortagón, ABC7. Much for that, Josie. And we've been getting comments from you all afternoon since this story first broke. Uh, Walden telling us tonight, I hope I've mastered forgive and forget by the time I get that age because this is ridiculous. And again, what we showed you a little while ago, a lot of, oh my goodnesses, and a lot of people just simply cannot believe, like these three viewers, and also tonight, Patsy saying, sad prayers for all involved. Again, thank you for your comments on that. All right, let's switch gears right now. So, what did you think about election weekend? Did the voters have your back on the issues that you really cared about? El Paso firefighters are certainly feeling the love, no doubt. Voters said yes, they deserve a 9% pay raise over the next three years. Plus, they will have a second chance on failed drug tests and health insurance rates that the fire union asked for. Also, voters in the El Paso School District chose Al Velarde, Trent Hatch, and Dory Fennenbach as the three new faces on the school board. They will join four previously elected trustees, and together they will put control of the district back in their own hands, away from the state. Now that the election is over, the EPISD board can now set the budget for the coming school year and finalize a tax rate. That has to be done and approved by June. Only on ABC 7, it is back to the drawing board for the Isleta School District. Voters said no to a 10% tax increase. That would have paid for the district's nearly half a billion dollar bond proposal. Now, it was a close one with 51% of voters saying no and 49% of the voters saying yes. Now, here is what's only on ABC 7. Ironically, it's those who would have benefited the most who voted down the bond. Now, taking a look at the early voting numbers, which we've been doing all day, more voters in the Hanks and Eastwood areas voted no. 
Now, if it had passed, the bond would have paid for a brand new $94 million Eastwood High School. Our precincts in the Riverside and Parkland and Bel Air areas generally supported the proposal, even though their schools would have received less money. And finally, it's precincts around Del Valle and Isleta High School that were mixed. So, what did you think about the election? Tell us right now on Facebook. You can even tweet us as well. Hey, if you are just joining us, folks, maybe you missed the first few minutes. Storm tracker Nicole Gomez talking about an ABC7 first alert. All of us are under it, and Nicole, this one could be serious because you're tracking potential rainstorms that could pack a punch with hail, and it could be serious. Yes, of course. So not everyone will see hail and thunderstorms, okay. but there's a possibility that we could. Our model showing us that we will see those widespread showers and thunderstorms for tomorrow. But uh, for the most part, it was nice today. Let's take a look at our time lapse here and. Mainly what we're tracking is a few clouds. So again, a nice start to our work week, but those changes will begin by tomorrow. We'll take a look at our future track model coming up in just a few minutes. Now what we're seeing now, just a few clouds, but as we advance our time lapse here, you can see those clouds begin to get thicker. This is our shot from Tom Lee Elementary School. But again, a beautiful day today. Now we'll start off with our future track model. Those of you headed off to work around five, six, even seven o'clock, we're dry. Notice by 10 o'clock, we start to see rainfall around TRC, silver city and well to our north but as I advance the model here we'll have to see the updated model in your full forecast in just a few minutes but right now again mainly what we're tracking is just a few clouds wind 17 El Paso 10 Las Cruces 9 Alamogordo our wind gusts were at 28 El Paso 20 in Ruidoso so as you just saw on our future track model up until about 10 o'clock in the morning those rain chances will begin to increase so our storm track weather first alert in effect for showers and thunderstorms tomorrow possible lightning hail and it looks like the rain and storms will stick around until about wind Stay. So we'll take a look at the latest future track computer model in your full forecast, Bob. All right, thanks so much for that, Nicole. And remember, you can always connect with us by using the name CU on the CW on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as well. Plus, you'll find the discussions always happening at the KVIA.com Facebook page as well. Okay, we knew this one was going to generate a big buzz. One thing is always for sure, Nicole, if we post anything about dogs or cats on our Facebook page, the viewers are going to eat it up. Say, especially yeah. when the story is about an animal who could potentially get hurt. So let's get to yeah. some of those comments. Mindy saying, what a lot of you are. Safety is always first, and they're not acting safely for themselves, the dog, or for other drivers around them. Okay, this is what they're talking about. If you didn't know, this photo was sent to Good Morning El Paso, Stephanie Valle last week. It shows the dog standing on the back of the cab and no leash keeping it from jumping or falling off the back of the flatbed. You can also clearly see the name of the company on the side of the truck, Five Star Automatic Fire Protection. So ABC7 visited Five Star to speak with the company about that picture. Well, the vice president of the company was outraged. In fact, she fired the truck driver and his supervisor immediately on the spot, fired them. And we can tell you, Five Star posted a statement on its Facebook page, obviously again, not happy, saying all of our employees have been counseled about the need to avoid endangering any animals in the course of their duties. And Nicole, here's what some of our viewers are saying tonight. Like Roger, why do y'all always want to fire someone? Talk to the guy and fix the problem. Easy solution. Lalo, good, very good. Now take the dog away from him and give it to a loving family. And also tonight, Israel, maybe I don't understand, since when is letting your dog into a truck a crime? Well, when he's on the back of a flatbed and he could fall off, that's when. Uh, and apparently it's not, though. We'll talk about that in just a second. Alexia saying, I think the punishment is just right. What if the leash broke and the dog flew into the windshield of a car and caused a pileup? What then? Some people just have absolutely no common sense, and uh, it appears the dog was not even on a leash. Right, and then Ralph says, well, the problem is it's a company truck. The company's insurance is liable if the dog falls off and causes an accident. Poor guys, they should have known better. And Coco Bear, I just hope it didn't take his anger out. He didn't take his anger out on the dog, I should say. All right, some speculation, but of course we always hope that doesn't happen. Thanks so much for your help on that, Nicole. Well, here's another twist to a story tonight. Animal story, uh, that animal story, animal services getting involved. The dog actually belongs to the driver. He will not be arrested, charged, or even fined. Turns out there's no city ordinance prohibiting you from driving with an animal on a flatbed truck. Uh, the city is reportedly now looking to add some language to the animal ordinance to require
require animals be properly restrained and kenneled while in the moving vehicle. If you'd like to tell the city how you feel about this and other animal ordinance related issues, there's a meeting on Thursday at Animal Services Center in Northeast El Paso. Okay, Nicole, the memes were flying in today regarding Tom Brady. We knew that was going to happen. If you didn't know, he's been suspended for a couple games, or four games actually. Robert posting how many rings Tom Brady got. That's just the sample of what you were sharing with us. Some saying his Super Bowl ring should be yanked. And you're also cracking us up tonight with your comments on this guy. Yep, that's McDonald's new Hamburglar. He's back with a whole new look. So on Facebook, I asked, does it make you think of a double cheeseburger or make you want to double check your locks? Margie says, he looks creepy. I double check my locks at night. We'll be right back. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. You don't just watch the news. You are the news. Stay with us.